So now we have the $30 being tracked perpetually and nothing's happening to the income statement because uh, we haven't sold it yet. This is a prior $30 from a prior transaction. That's not the same thing. Right click on the tab up top. Let's duplicate it because now we should have another form that's actually tracking the inventory perpetually within the system. So we'll go to the accounting dropdown and reports. And then let's type in up top. I'm going to say hide this. This isn't the report I wanted. This is not the reports you're looking for. Reports, this is gonna go to uh, inventory item list. Inventory item list. And this then is now tracking the inventory internally. Now we only have one item, the cost of $300 of $30 for it because, uh, and that normally would match what's on the balance sheet here. But remember, we posted something else, that first transaction that wasn't tracked internally. So this is the added report, which is now tracking the units of inventory uh, and it'll apply a flow assumption for us and everything, but it takes a little bit more work for us to, uh, to, to populate. Now, the next thing that would happen in this process, if I go to the first tab, is that we would have revenue that would be generated. Again, normally, if you have revenue gener generated, you would have an invoice form or you would have a, a uh, receive money form. So for example, if I made an invoice form and we had like customer, customer one, generic customer one, uh, then down here, you would have your item that would be sold. Now the item is now matching the, uh, the the, the, this is the item that is now pulling in from the amount that we populated into the system for, for uh, the items, and it's now pulling in the unit price. So if I recorded an invoice, then what would it do? It would increase accounts receivable, which is a non-cruel account, something that's gonna be difficult to deal with with the bank fees, but we'll talk more about that later. The other side would go to sales of 500 and on a perpetual inventory system, the uh, cost of goods sold would be recorded as well as the, the decrease in the inventory. And if you had taxes involved, it would also be applying the taxes over here as well. So uh, you, you can also imagine being on a perpetual inventory system. Like I could imagine, I mean, sorry, using the bank feeds, I could imagine going into the bank accounts over here and saying that if I go into my bank account, that that I'm gonna see the deposits and I go into my reconcile, I'm gonna see the deposits that are gonna clear the, the, the bank. So let's say this was a, let's say this was a, a deposit from an, an invoice or a sale of inventory. They do give you the ability to add the inventory item on the sale side here. But again, it would be difficult usually to do that. If you get a deposit uh, that's coming through, then you're probably not gonna track the inventory. Usually if you're selling inventory, you're gonna have to make an invoice or a spend or, or, a, or a receive money form and then match over here. So let's just show that for now. If I hit the drop down again, let's just make that invoice again. If I make the invoice again and say this is customer one, customer one, boom. And this is gonna happen in 2022, let's say. So I'm somewhere in 2022, let's say April or whatever of 2022. Uh, actually, it's gotta be the end of 2022, doesn't it? Cause we had it sometime in like December. Okay, and then my item is gonna be that inventory item. All right, so let's go ahead and record this. So I'd say approve uh, invoice field explain. I need a date here. Due date is going to be, uh, let's say, December 31st. All right, approve. So now we can have some revenue on our income statement. That'll be good. So if I go to my balance sheet and update that, now we're tracking accounts receivable 
which is which is a non-cash kind of concept so that that pulls us away from just being able to construct our books on a cash basis we'll talk about deposits more later uh, if i go to the income statement and update it now we've got the uh, sales which is recorded at that 500 and the cost of goods sold now note cost of goods sold did not change because i didn't turn on the tracking of the inventory so let me just show you what I mean. I kind of messed it up here. I'm going to go back to the first tab and let's go to our business dropdown. And if you go into your products and services and then go into this item here, uh, I'm going to edit the item. So I turned everything on, but I didn't turn on the track inventory item, which is the perpetual tick mark you have to tick off so that it will track the inventory perpetually. So if you save that, it will not recreate everything retroactively. So if I wanted to do this again, I'd have to go back in here and say, okay, I'm gonna go in here and basically uh, delete the transaction of the purchase of the inventory, uh, and then I'll record it again. So if, I, so if I go back in and say, all right, this transaction right here, 